Welcome to day one of our Caribbean Entrepreneur Summit. I'm Kamika Ruth Taylor, and today I have with me Dallan Vanterpool. He'll be one of the guests who will be sharing in the live Q&A this evening. Dallan is a financial educator and private banker from the British Virgin Islands. He helps modern professionals connect their career moves to their wealth goals via his blog, and the Careers Cashflow podcast at dallanvanterpool.com. His focus is on helping others build extraordinary careers, master their personal finances, and create additional income streams so they can live a life of freedom. A few years ago, he moved to Panama, where he now works and navigates life in Spanish. In April of 2021, he released his debut book, No Boss, Only Clients, how to build an extraordinary career and a life of freedom. And that's why we have him here. So today he's here to help us as authors and entrepreneurs to win the money game and learn how to gain financial freedom. Without further ado, welcome to the summit, Dallin. Thanks so much, Ruth. Glad to be here and glad to be sharing with all these other amazing Caribbean authors as well. Awesome. Now, I read your book. Well, the audio version. <laughs> I, Even better. I, I went on a rapid um, listen through and I loved it. And part of the thing that you tackled is the difference between a freelancer Mm -hmm. and an entrepreneur and one of the things I found you did in the book is to kind of redeem the nine to five as a good thing and most authors the truth is they're not making a full-time living with their writing they're writing and they still have a nine to yeah. five and uh, the thing is that we talk about the starving artist and mm -hmm. and this summit the aim is to show authors how you can leverage your book to create additional revenue streams and some of them might just become authorpreneurs and entrepreneurs yeah. so talk to us why did you write this book yeah absolutely so the why behind the book as you already touched on is largely between my personal frustration and then also seeing the frustration of so many other people who are trying to do this nine to five thing who are trying to be successful they're trying to make more money and not just money for the sake of becoming rich, but they're trying to do things for their family. They're trying to do things for their parents. They actually have good things that they want to do, but they just can't figure out how to make it work. Either the money isn't there or they have the money, but they don't have the time because they're trained to some kind of job where they're working 24 hours a day, or they don't have the freedom. And when I say freedom, I mean autonomy, the ability to direct your own time and make decisions on what you want to do and how you want to do it and how much you want to spend. So we have this conundrum where people are lacking the correct balance or the correct mix of time, money, and freedom. So I set out to solve this problem for myself. And in the process of doing that, I ended up launching the Careers and Cashflow podcast. And we have over 200 episodes right now everything from my personal research to books I've read, interviewing persons who are further along on this journey, because I don't claim to have all the answers at all. And I realized that at some point we have all these information. So we have the blog posts over here, we have the podcast episodes, but we didn't have any one product where all of this information and this knowledge was kind of distilled down to the best of, you know, cause you have the best of Barris Hammond or the best of somebody after they put out a whole bunch of stuff. Let's, let's distill this down to the best, most, useful information and put it together in a kind of the book almost reads as you probably know it is almost like a little course so we're taking you along here and we're, we're walking you through a process of course the book is written in a way where the chapters and so on are episodic in a, in a sort of way so you can you can skip around you don't have to necessarily read the book from start to finish you probably get a better feel if you do but you can skip around and, and grab things that you need but i wanted to get the point across to people that hey this nine to five thing that you're doing it's not necessarily a bad thing if you know how to do it correctly, right? And if you see from the title, the no boss, only clients concept is not so much telling you to go out and quit your job tomorrow, but it's saying that, hey, anyone in the chain of events that gets you paid is not your boss. Those are your clients. You're the expert, you're the professional, you have the value to bring and you're delivering that value to someone who's paying you money. Therefore, that is your client, not your boss. And that simple psychological shift, along with a number of other things we talk about in the book, of course, can change the power dynamics so much between how you're approaching your nine to five versus how you you've been programmed to approach it before, right? So you're now taking more agency and authority in what you're doing and realizing that you're not waiting around to get fired. You might decide to drop that client. You know what I mean? You might have multiple clients. There's a whole different kind of mind shift here 
And it's not just putting you in a powerful position, but it's also putting more pressure on you. Because when you're dealing with a client service relationship, you actually have to provide value in order to get paid. Because think about it, if you hired somebody to do a service for you and they're not doing the job, you're not going to pay them, right? So you, you, you can't do the passive, let me sit down on, on, on the computer all day and, and I'm going to scroll through Instagram and my phone all day and then hope to get paid. No, you have to put yourself in a different kind of mindset where you're adding value and building your name, not just in the company, but in the industry. So we go into a whole bunch of stuff in the book with the ultimate goal into getting you to learn how to build additional income streams. So the book I would say is 60% talking about how to do this nine to five thing correctly. And then coming down to the last 40%, we shift sharply into how to manage your money and how to build more income streams. Cause that's kind of where my wheelhouse is as an investment banker. Awesome. I love it. In reading it, I said, this is about redeeming the nine to five because the yeah. whole rave today is about quit your job. Don't build somebody yeah. else's dream and just jump into entrepreneurship. Can you yeah. touch a little bit on that? I know we might end up on your soapbox, but just touch a little bit on that for our authors, because the reality is some of our authors are looking for their book to be that which helps them to jump and leave the nine to five. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, like you said, that's, that's all the rave right now. If you want us to become an entrepreneur and trust me, I am, I come from an entrepreneurial family. I, I have entrepreneurial things going on I've done that before. And I've, I've dealt with clients. I deal with clients every day as an investment banker who are entrepreneurs and everything. And I understand that, that, that urge, trust me, I understand the frustration when you don't like your nine to five and you don't like what it's doing, but I heard something from a gentleman. If you follow him on Instagram, Ash Cash a couple of weeks ago, and he, he mentioned this on one of his shows, he said, look, you know, your job is your first investor, right? Your job, and that, that stuck up with me so hard. Your job is your first investor. And that's kind of what we're talking about in the book, realizing that, hey, if you're getting this paycheck, if you're getting whatever, $2,000, $3,000 a month, if you think you're gonna become an entrepreneur, entrepreneurship has to do with taking the resources from other people, whether it's investors or clients or whatever it is, and putting those resources to work in such a productive way that you can generate enough return to keep that business going with or without you. So here's the thing. If you start looking again at your job as, you know, it's a no boss, only clients kind of thing here, as your investor, as somebody who's putting money into you, you have to first learn how to produce and multiply that which you already have, what you're already receiving. Learn how to do that skill and get out of this scarcity mindset. Oh, I don't have enough money. I don't have to, I, I get it, trust me. But you have, to, you have to make that mental switch first before you're gonna become an, an, a successful entrepreneur. The other thing is that there's this, uh, there's just this breakdown we go into in the book and this is based on teachings from Seth Godin. And he's breaking down in there the difference between a, free, a freelancer, an employee, a freelancer, and an entrepreneur. And I think so many of us are caught up trying to make that, that, that huge jump from employee over to entrepreneur, not realizing that there's a sweet middle where you can actually stay in that middle and be a freelancer for a while before making that jump to entrepreneur. Or there's a mis, uh, misdefinition out there. We were talking just uh, just before the show about folks who are on Instagram saying, oh, I'm CEO of this. I'm, this. I'm like, okay, if you're the chief executive officer, name me your other executive officers. Like, who, who's the CFO? Who's the CEO? You know, who's the head of purchase? Like, I don't know. How, what do you mean that you're the chief if there's no other officers? You can't be a one-man CEO of a, of a company. Because when you start talking about doing entrepreneurship, you're taking on the responsibility now of generating enough income to pay other people's bills and other people's families and their salary and that kind of stuff. So you really have to understand what you're doing and also be prepared to build something. This is a, the, the true essence of entrepreneurship, I would say. Build something that can function with or without you. If you are building a business, if you think you're building an entrepreneurial business and you're making all the decisions, you're not putting the systems in place and the different things in place to where you can step away and things still function properly, then you're not really building an entrepreneurial business, which is fine, but you just need to know that what you're doing is freelancing. And that is excellent. I mean, I know people who make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year freelancing, but I think it's important to make that definition clear in what you're doing. As far as authors go, I think there's a lot of things we can do as authors where we, we, miss it, we miss out on opportunities to leverage our book. So for example, for me, yes, of course, you can leverage your book and make money from the, from the book sales. <clears throat> you can absolutely do that. There's the Amazon sales with the little tiny royalties that come in. But actually so far for the year since I launched the book, we've generated more revenue from actual direct sales deals versus Amazon sales. I've made more from doing things where I say, look, I'm gonna buy the book from Amazon. This is, you know, this is the business mindset now. As an author, you can go on Amazon and buy the book at cost. So let's say your book 
at, you sell it for whatever price on Amazon, $15, $20, whatever it is. But you personally can go on and buy 100 copies of your book for $4, $5. When you go and do a private placement deal, you can sell the book for whatever you want. You can actually sell the book for the same $15 on Amazon, but now instead of making the $2 or whatever cents that Amazon is paying you, you're making the complete spread between the $5 plus shipping and the $15 that you sell it for. So you could be making, by going out and doing that direct hustle, making some direct contacts, you could be contacts, you could be making $10 per book sale versus sitting around waiting for someone to click on Amazon to buy one at a time. You could be selling 100 books at a time versus trying to sell one book here and share a link on Twitter, this and that other. So if you look at my actual Amazon sales for what people have bought on, on the internet, it doesn't look that impressive. But if I show you what I've actually moved in terms of actually product in bulk deals and sponsorship deals in giving out books to different schools, for example, at the top of this year, we decided, look, we want to get this information into the hands of young people. So we got together and we gave a free copy of the book sponsored by a number of different companies and organizations. They sponsored the books and we gave them away free to all the high schools and the college in the British Virgin Islands. So this is hundreds of books given away. Now, what is that doing? If you give the book away, this is the business, this is the, people didn't know this at the time. This is the business move. We're at we're Curve and Entrepreneur uh, Summit. So we're giving the details away. If you're gonna give it away to a bunch of students, you give it away to 100, 200, 300 students. What's gonna happen is this, the parents are gonna know, wanna know what are these kids reading? So the parents are gonna look at it and then they're gonna mention it to somebody else. So as much as it is a part of doing corporate philanthropy, it's also a marketing move and getting the buzz out into the community about what's going on. Cause now you have the press releases going on and all this stuff. You have bookstores contacting you to want to do things. And then you have speaking engagements, right? Cause now as your book is, is out there, if you position it correctly, you now have authority as an expert in that area. As your book out there, now you can say, okay, I'm going to do a course based on this book. Uh, one of the things, one of my coaches told me when you're, when you're writing a book is that you will put everything in the book and people will still call you and be like, Hey, I would love to just sit down and talk to you about what's in the book. And you're going to tell them the same thing they had in the book. And they're going to be like, oh my gosh, that is so amazing. I never heard that before. So there's a whole bunch of things you can look at as, as yes, there's the book sales and that's not to be forsaken at all, but there, there's also so much more money you could make by using your book as leverage, whether, I mean, just last week, I just, was it last, yes, last week I did a speaking engagement that wasn't paid necessarily, but that particular organization sponsored, you know, a large number of books before for a project that we were doing. So you could take your books now and say, look, from your nine to five, if you have a vacation day, right? You're going to take a vacation day. Instead of spending that browsing on Netflix, you're going to take that vacation day to do a speaking engagement that is paying $1,500. That's paying $2,000. So you just took a vacation day from your nine to five based on your book. And you made, I don't know, half your month's salary, depending on where you are and on the, on the pay scheme. So I think that's the kind of mindset that authors need to start having, uh, especially from the Caribbean perspective as we work together and also just the networking. I mean, you know how we got together it was one person led to the next who saw on Instagram, who listened to a podcast and it was a whole big Caribbean connection. And they say, yo, I see a Caribbean brother who's doing something. I respect that. There's no need for me to be in competition and hate. Let me call up Ruth and try to put two of them in contact so they can make the ends meet. So I think that's where we have to go as Caribbean authors, obviously making the right business moves, but also leveraging our own network as you're very well trying to do here with the summit and all the things, all the good things you're doing so that we can stop bouncing this around in the Caribbean, just like how things get bounced around in the US. Awesome. This is day one and we are getting some value bombs. <laughs> We're getting some <laughs> golden nuggets. I think we can pack up and go home <laughs> because <laughs> we've heard what entrepreneurship is about. And it's really about leveraging your book to create profitable products and services, but also yeah. to get a platform for greater impact. And that's yeah. what I hear coming out. And I am excited because yeah. yes, my guests fully understand the concepts and the whole thing about direct sales, because many times authors come to me and they're open arms. I'm not selling that much on Amazon and yeah. I need to market and I need to this. And I'm saying tap into your direct network first, especially yeah as Caribbean authors and uh, yeah. leverage that it's go beyond book sales, think beyond yeah. book sales. And mm -hmm. it just seems strange. Yeah. Especially when you're, especially when you're a new author, right? You have, you have to kind of, you have to kind of humble yourself and realize people don't really have a reason to believe your book is good. Let's just step back. I know it's your baby. I, we, I mean, we're all authors that so we understand you put a lot of time into it and your blood and sweat and tears and money and all kind of stuff. But if you take a step back, if somebody just walked up to you on the street and you saw something randomly passing across, people spend what, 
a fractions of a second on a website, people don't really have a reason to go in there and take out their wallet and spend money or swipe their credit card and spend money on your random book. And I'm saying that this is the same, this is the same realization I had to come to as well. So when you're a new author, you have to go the extra mile and really convince people as to why they're doing this, right? Why they should give your book a chance. I mean, one of the first thing I did when my book came out, I bought a hundred copies of my own book. I was like, look, if I can't believe in myself to put the money out there and buy it for myself and, and have the confidence that I'll get them sold, then why should somebody else buy the book? So I, mean, I, sold it, I mean, I'm at the dentist. My dentist has a copy of the book. They bought a book. You know, I have coworkers. I didn't even say anything. I just kept quietly, indirectly. I walked into the office one day and there were just like 10, 15, 35,000 copies of my book just kind of sitting on the corner of my desk. Didn't say anything. Of course, somebody walked by. Hey, what's that? Oh, th th this right here? Oh, I, I, sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to put that in your face. You, you want to know what it's about? You can send me X, Y, Z dollars and you can read all about it. Uh, and also using the tools that we have. I mean, I set up a convert. One of the tricks I use recently is I set up a convert kit account and I've been giving away um, samples of the book for free, right? And this is a way to build your email list and try to get the word out there some more as well. So actually this is one of the offers I have uh, for, uh, for, the, for the participants of the summit who want to go check it out. Um, you can go on to dallonvanderpool.com or dallonv.com slash NBOC free sample. And you can grab you, I'll send you a link to this as well, so you can put it out there. But you can grab uh, the intro and the first two chapters of the book for free. Again, showing that, hey, I know, you don't know who I am, you're not sure, no problem. Here's a free sample, check it out. Read the first couple of chapters. If you like it, go on and buy the book. If you don't like it, no problem. At least you learn something from the first couple of chapters. You gotta be willing to give people that reason and that, that incentive to try, to try to do something with your book, rather than just kind of sitting down, waiting for someone to click on Amazon. I love it. Let's transition a little bit about how authors can win the money game. Lord knows this is a game that I have struggled in for a long time and I'm yeah. seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. What is yeah. your advice to authors in terms of um, using their books as they make money? What are some of the best practices Right now, I'll preface this by saying, obviously, I'm a, I'm a new author. I'm very familiar with the process of making money and running businesses and banking and all that kind of stuff. So I don't claim to have all the answers. But I'd say this, the first thing you need to do when you're approaching this author, this author you know, project is to really treat it, treat it as a separate business. Uh, you got to know your numbers, right? You want to have a separate bank account, if you can, where the, the book sales and the different things and the expenses are coming in. I've talked to other authors before. And you say, well, how many books did you sell this month? Ah, a couple. Uh, I'm sorry? But what is that number? I didn't hear that number. You said a couple. Like what? Are, you sold two? Because a couple is two, right? Or how, how much did you spend on marketing this month? Or how much are you spending on production of the book and the book cover design and all that kind of stuff? For example, coming into uh, the, the launch of the book, I had a pretty good idea of exactly how much money I was in the hole for, how much money we had spent on, you know, book coaching and editing and all the different stuff. So I have a number in my head already as to where I know we're breaking even on how much money was put into the whole book. So you want to really, you want to really know your numbers and that kind of stuff. And then the third thing I would say is, uh, as you kind of br brushed on before a little bit here, is really leveraging all the different income streams that you can create based on your books. So, okay, you wrote a book, so you have book sales, great. You have speaking engagements, great. You have summaries that you could give out, great. You have uh, Instagram Live and different things you can do, great. Now Twitter and different things for authors who might not be comfortable doing video. You have Twitter Spaces. With it, depending on which country you're in, they're actually now ruling out paid spaces or ticketed spaces where people can pay to come and hear you talk about your book. You have small group trainings. Hey, maybe you're not famous. Maybe you can't Tony Robbins it and fill a room of 20, 30, 40 people. But depending on what your book is about, maybe you can fill a room at four. Maybe you can fill a room at five, right? And you can get people to come in and pay $20, $25 to talk about what it is you're talking about in the book, or I would actually go a little bit higher than that. I'm just using that example, but you want to pay charge a hundred dollars for a small group session to have access to you and what you're talking about. So you really want to start thinking about your book. Like I said, not just as a product, but as a platform, right? The book is not the product itself. I actually heard, and this is not, uh, you know, this is not a cop out and saying that you can't make sale. You can't make money from actually selling the book. But I'm just saying there's so much money, more money to be made when you look at the book as a platform. I actually had one book coach who said, look, the, the book is a business card. One of the persons who got me into, the, into the, the whole book writing thing, I was at a conference and I'm talking about, this is a podcasting conference. It must have been, I don't know, five, 600 of us in the room. And this guy had his staff during his speech, 
they came in with just boxes and they gave away hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of this guy's book for free. Just, hey man, just take the book. I don't even care. But what did he do? Connected to that book, his book was about becoming a self-published author, right? And connected to that book, he was selling a course on how to write your book in, I think it was 60 or 90 days or whatever it was. And the course cost like $5,000. So for him to give out $500 worth of books, remember you're buying your book at cost, you're not paying the full cost for it like Amazon. To spend $500 uh, to, to give out your book to a bunch of people, if only one person signed up for the course, one out of 600 people, if one out of those 600 people signed up for your course, you already made $4,500. Right. And of course, the likelihood is that more than that will, will, will sign up. But you see how the odds kind of change when you start looking at the book as a business card. You're looking at the book. Yes, there's something that you can sell, but it's also a platform for doing a whole bunch of this other stuff. And also, as you, you know, you talk about in my book, I think there, there are ways to leverage what's going on with your book and, and, your, and your nine to five job, depending on what field, field you're in. Because now as a published author, you've established that you have different skills. You have project management skills. Anybody who's written a book knows this is not just about writing. This is a project management thing you're, do, you're trying to do. You have, you have highly advanced writing skills. You know how to work with an editor and take feedback even when it's negative or, or somebody's telling you to do something differently. You've now advanced a whole bunch of different skills that you have uh, that you can start demonstrating and using at the office. I mean, if you can write a book, chances are you could be helping some one of these fake Instagram CEOs with their, their, their email copy or writing captions. For, for what they're doing. If you've written a whole book, you can start doing a whole bunch of other stuff as well to use those writing skills to make more money. Okay, I got it. In terms of um, when you do make that money, <laughs> what do we do with it? So we have a separate account, yep. all right? So that we can watch our numbers. Say I have this course and I now make five or 10,000 US dollars. Mm -hmm what would you advise us to do? I know each person's personal finance is, is, is different, but what are the best practices in terms of managing money? Yeah, well, I, I have to slide in my quick disclaimer here for licensing purposes. My legal disclaimer, I just, this is not actual investment advice. Any information I say from henceforth would be strictly for informational and educational purposes only. I am not your financial advisor. Any risk you take based on this is solely your responsibility. And we're back. Uh, so, <laughs> so I mean, when you're talking about money and that kind of stuff, every, everybody's financial situation is a little bit different. Everybody's what we call their risk appetite and what you're willing to tolerate is obviously a little bit different. I am not a fan, even though I'm a banker, I'm, I'm not a fan of just leaving money in the bank, right? Because I don't know how banks are in Jamaica, but if you're from anywhere else in the Caribbean or else in the world, uh, the savings rate by just leaving money in the bank it's not that great. Usually you're talking about, especially in the Caribbean, for what I've seen, you're talking about less than 1%. In some places I've seen less than half a percent, right? So that's depending on where you are. When you're down here in Panama, it's a different kind of scene, different kind of market. You can make more, uh, more money on, a, on, on savings products and that kind of stuff. But then you want to start talking about, about investing your money, right? And we, we get into this in the book just a little bit. And some ideas, again, not specific advice, but things to think about are, uh, you might hear people say they want to buy stocks, right? This is not to jump deep end into the whole investing thing right now, but people might say they want to buy stocks and different things. But if you're new out there, you might not know how to research and pick a stock and which company is good and which company is bad. So one of the easy, you know, super base level things you can start thinking about doing is instead of buying one stock, you can start thinking about buying what we call an index fund, right? So you might've heard things on the news like the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ or uh, the, not the, the S&P 500 and other uh, different indices out there. So you can, when you buy an index fund, what you're doing is saying, look, take, for example, S&P 500. This is taking the 500 largest companies based on market capitalization. Uh, so you got your Apples, your Googles, your, your, the, the, all the big ones you would normally think about. And by buying one share of that, what you're really doing is buying a little piece of all 500 of those. So you're kind of spreading out your risk. Even if one company goes down, well, you have 499 others in the basket, kind of keeping things afloat. So that's an easy way for folks who are just starting out, if you're not sure what you want to do, an easy, low cost way to kind of get your foot in the water uh, and, and, and start making some more money than you could possibly, than you would probably make if you were just in a savings account. Now, of course, the thing with stocks and that kind of thing is that it could also go down, right? So there's a risk in there. Um, so you kind of measure that risk and how much you need the money and how much you're willing to lose and, and, and look at historical trends. Uh, what it, you, you got to ask yourself, what's more likely? for the entire economy of all the stock markets in the world to crash and go down 
or for your bank to keep on paying you the pennies. You know, you, you you take the choice and you you roll the dice on whichever side, uh, whichever side you want to you want to go on. Um, so those are some of the things you can start thinking about, of course. Um, but before you even get into that, you want to learn the discipline of saving. I always tell people if you can, you don't want to jump deep end in into you know investing and all this kind of stuff if you haven't learned the discipline of of saving. Right? You want to make sure you have things covered. Make sure you have your emergency fund built. Make sure you can cover expenses so that if and when you do take that jump to leave and become an entrepreneur full time, you have some kind of cushion in there built in um, so that you can you can you know hold yourself afloat for as long as necessary, six months, a year, depending on your situation. All right. Thank you so much, Dallin. We have gotten so much value from this conversation. So he's basically saying, authors, as you make the money, as you leverage and develop multiple income streams, save and think about investing and remember to have that separate bank account <laughs> for yeah. your book sales that's something that i didn't do in the beginning but recently i've been working with a couple of authors and one of them she's in her 70s and what she said to me this is her first book when i said um you need to attach your amazon to your bank account and she yeah. said i'm going to open up a, a bank account just for my books. She hasn't sold yep. a single book yet, but she's preparing. I have another right. one and she just produced her first book. And she said, um, Auntie Ruth, you know, I'm getting my numbers all mixed up. Can I open yep. a separate account <laughs> yep. for my yep. books? Yep. And I said, yes, that's the way to go. And yep. uh, you need to do it. So if you don't get anything else from this conversation, it is leverage your book yeah work the direct sales method and buy the books at cost price what he's talking about is that as an author when you put your book on amazon you get to buy your book at author prices you are not gaming the system because those sales do not count towards your um bestseller status or anything like that it's yeah. just as if you would have been printing at a local printer. So Amazon becomes your, your printer, so to speak, and your distributor. And then you can sell that and make more money. So tap into your network and think creatively. How can I leverage this book? How can we get in touch with you and find out more about what you do? Absolutely. You can also go to my website, dallonv.com or dallonvanderpool.com. Find out what I'm up to there. And of course, I'm on social media everywhere at Dallon Vanderpool. That's D-A-L-A-N uh, Vanderpool. So you can find me on Twitter and LinkedIn, especially Instagram. Uh, you can find me there, of course, and let me know what's going on. Stop over, say hello, talk to me, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions and keep the conversation going.